Hello viewers, the topic for today is called as Pumping Lemma. So Pumping Lemma is a concept from the subject theory of computer science or theory of computation or automata theory, whatever you wish to call it, which decides whether a particular language is regular or not. First of all, the languages which are accepted by a finite automata are termed as regular languages and on contrary to that, the languages which are not accepted by such machines are called as not regular languages or non-regular languages. In this case, pumping lemma comes into picture. All those languages which abide to certain conditions, as you can see over here, these are certain conditions. If the if any of a language, if any language satisfies these three conditions, all the three conditions, then it is called as a regular language. And this is what we call as pumping lemma. These three conditions are very important. If any of these conditions are not satisfied by any language, it is straight away called as a non-regular language. Clear? So let's have a look at this algorithm. Or we can say, let's have a look at these conditions. The first condition is x, y raised to i, z. What does it mean? Okay. Let's assume that whatever language is given to you, let's assume that it is a regular language. So for example, the language given to us is a. So I will straight away assume that A is a regular language. Next what you need to do is you need to convert this A into three parts. And this particular three parts or combination of these three parts is called as S. So basically what we are doing is we are taking one more string, temporary string S which belongs to A and further we divide that S into three parts that is x, y and z. Clear with this so far? Now, according to this, x, y is to i, z. It simply means we are going to pump the middle character i number of times. What it means is, if I pump the middle character i number of times or if I repeat the middle characters i number of times, we check the resultant string that we are getting. If at all the resultant string also belongs to a, then we can say that the given language has satisfied this condition and then we will check the next two conditions. If at all all the three conditions are satisfied, then only I will say that the given language is regular, otherwise it is not regular. The next two conditions are very simple. Length of y, mod y simply means length of y. Length of y should be a non-zero number. That is the next condition. And the last condition is length of xy should be less than or equal to p. Now what is this p? This p is nothing but the pumping length. How many times I am incrementing the value of the middle character or how many times it is corresponding to the repetition is called as pumping length. It will be much clear when we will take one example. Okay. So basically just assume that whatever the value of p is, the length of xy should be either less than that or equal to that, but not more than that. Okay, so these are the three conditions. It will be very clear once we start or begin with an example. So stay tuned till the end of this video. I'm going to take an example to show what exactly this pumping lemma is all about. Okay, so the very first problem on pumping lemma is something like this. Let's assume that a language L which is given as a raised to n, b raised to n. So now the very first thing that we should do is we have to make an assumption that the given language is already a regular language. So I will write over here. Let's assume L is regular. Now the first thing that you need to do is you have to write L in terms of S. Okay. So now simply write S belongs to L. That is, now S becomes A raised to P, B raised to P. What is this P? You saw over here that P is called as pumping length. So whatever is the raised to power given in this question, you have to convert those terms in terms of P. So that we can prove this particular example with the help of pumping lemma. It's really that simple. Whatever is the original power mentioned in the language, you have to write that in terms of P. And that language will now become S. Clear? So what we should do next is, we have to define what is P. 
Okay, so we can take any value of p more than zero. So let's assume p is equal to five. So if I take p is equal to five, what will be s? S will be simply a raised to five, b raised to five. So far, this particular language looks regular, right? Because it's having equal number of a's and equal number of b's. But let's check out uh, whether it's actually regular or not. What we should do next is we now need to write it in terms of something like this. Okay. Now, as p's value is five, now let's have a look at these two conditions, at these three conditions, in fact. First condition we will look uh, right away after reading uh, the second and third conditions. Second condition is length of y should be more than zero. What are these x, y, and z we have not yet defined? So what we can do is we have to write this language s in terms of x, y, and z. Okay, something like this. So basically, this s has to be now written in terms of x, y, and z. We have to divide this entire term into x, y, z. So what we should do is it's very simple. We have to consider these two conditions, second and third. Length of y should be more than zero. Okay, so we can't take y as zero. There has to be at least one character present inside y. So what we can do is we have to start with length of x and y together. Length of x and y has to be either less than or equal to p. So for that, what we can do is p value we know it is five. So length of x y combined could be either one, two, three, four, or five in length. So what we can do is in this diagram over here, what we can do is in this uh, in this uh, statement over here, what we can do is we can consider the first character as x, the remaining four as y, and the rest could be z. So if I do so, is it satisfying the condition? Yes, because if I add x and y. The total length will be one plus four, that is five. So we can have out of these any values. You can either select two values as x and three as y, three and two, whatever be the combination. Just make sure that x plus y should not exceed the length of p, that is five in this case. Clear? So now I know these are my values. So these two conditions are satisfied. Only the first condition is left, the most crucial one. So what we can do is now let's assume. I is value as two. Why two? Why not zero? Why not one? Because zero we don't usually consider because uh, it can't be zero. Otherwise, the entire y term will be single a uh, single term. So we uh, don't use i is equal to zero. Uh, basically, uh, generally in the questions they mention that i should be more than zero. It's not mentioned over here, so it's a thumb rule. Don't consider i is equal to zero. You can start with i is equal to one, i equal to two, whatever it is. So if I consider i equal to one, it will remain the same thing. If I replace i by one, it will remain the same thing x y z. That's why I have taken i is equal to z. I is equal to two. Clear with this? So if I put i equal to two over here, that is in x y raised to two z, it becomes x that is a. What is y? Y is four times a. So now it becomes a a a a raised to two, and then followed by z. Which is five times b. So this entire string gets converted to something like this: a dot a raised to eight dot b raised to five. So it becomes a raised to nine dot b raised to five. So can you now compare this with the original statement given initially? That is, l is equal to a raised to n b raised to n. So is it also belonging to a? Yes or no? I can simply say that it is not belonging to A. Why? Because this is the very first condition. That is, if I pump the value of i, if I keep on incrementing the value of i, for every value of i, let me write over here. For every value of i, if it is, if it was not mentioned, kindly write it over there. For every value of i, this particular condition should hold good. If it Doesn't hold good, then we can say that this particular language is not regular. That is, by contradiction, I can say that the so and so language n is equal to a raised to n, b raised to n is not regular. So that is all about pumping lemma. 
I hope you got the understanding of what exactly pumping lemma is. I will repeat once again. The very first thing that we did is whatever is a language, we wrote it in terms of S. Okay. Whatever the powers were there in the language, we wrote it in terms of P. Initially, they were in terms of N, M, X, Y, whatever it may be. We have to write it in terms of P. That is our pumping length. And next, we converted S into three parts. We divided S into three parts: X, Y, and Z. And then we uh, took a value of I, put it in the equation number one, the condition number one, and found out the result. If the result also belongs to A, then we can say that the so and so language is regular. Otherwise, I can straight away conclude that the given language is not regular, as even if one of the conditions are not satisfied, the language is not regular. So this is what we call as pumping lemma. This is basically used for uh, checking whether a language is regular or not, whether the language is accepted by a finite automata or not. Okay, so these are its basic applications. It comes for ten marks in the university exam. You have to first of all write what exactly is pumping lemma, then give the conditions and whatever is the problem, solve that problem, and then you will easily get ten marks out of ten. That's it. If you like this content, do leave a thumbs up, share it with your friends, do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so far. God bless you. Take care. Thanks a lot.